Hello, friends, and welcome back to the next episode of Um Like Anime, your tri-weekly podcast for what the latest and greatest anime in a talk show format. My name's George, and with me as always is my buddy, Tony. Hello, I'm Tony. Welcome I back. Know, I don't know about this tri-weekly. I always say thrice weekly, <laughs> um, but tri-weekly, that sort of, it's like, yeah, you try it every week. And, <laughs> eh. Yeah, well, I like it because it, it speaks to the three episodes per week, but then also, yeah. uh, you know, sets the bar low. <laughs> We're just trying here, guys. Yeah. Give us a shot. We're trying to do an episode, uh, an episode three times a week. We're trying to do, I don't know. We're succeeding. I'm trying to talk and not make, <laughs> not doing very good at it at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's really that's all we're doing, and we're still struggling with that. So yeah, I've been uh, talking my whole life, and somehow I still can't say words in order that make sense in a way that they should. And my sentences never end, and I keep saying "and" at the end of my sentences, and I can't end them because. <sighs> But that's why this show is aptly titled, um, like, anime? Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it's hard to get those words out. Yeah, sometimes you got to find a word, and sometimes you need a word to fill the space until you do. Yeah. And sometimes um, you just keep filling the space with those words, and you realize you ran out of things to say. Yeah, that's happened several times. <laughs> but that hasn't happened yet, because up first, we got a... A show we both love, I think. I, I'll, I'll say that. I'll go out there and say that. Uh, I think you're right. This season's Odd Taxi. Yeah, this is, this is definitely like a front runner um, or amongst the front runners for best of season. Like it's so, has so much depth uh, to the story and all of the characters and their intertwining stories. And yeah. Very consistent. And I don't know, yeah, anime aren't always as neatly written and, I don't know, engaging as, as the show has been. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the, the fact that it's so engaging, because it, I mean, it is, it is just stringing us along week to week. You yeah, know? yeah. It's just, it's giving us a little, you know, a little bit and like, hey, come here, come here, come here, follow along. And, uh, and we're, we're, we're batting at that feather, you know, trying to follow it. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. it's so good at what it's doing. Like, I'm not even entirely sure, like, what reveal I'm waiting for. Like, right. Because we did learn some things, uh, some important things in this episode. Yeah. But it's still, you know, it didn't, uh, it was satisfying, but it, did, it still left a lot of questions. And yeah, I mean, so there's like the important things that are essentially just being introduced, like things that we didn't know that weren't necessarily important to us before. But now that we know about them, we know that they're going to be important in the future. Mm. Um, yeah, it's so well constructed, like just so well written. It like, really is a great show. If you don't have a Crunchyroll subscription, you should get one just for this. Um, Agreed. And that 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 shout out goes out to my friend who I know listens to this podcast who does not have a Crunchyroll subscription. I've offered to give him my login information, and he has refused. Um, it's oh. not that expensive, man. Sixty dollars a year. I mean, you really. can always watch it with ads too if you're. Well, yeah, but you can't watch the latest episode. But oh, you, that's true. You can be a week behind. Yeah. yeah, and it'd be yeah, it'd be free with ads and and just be a week behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah do that. Worth it. Worth it. Do that. This is. I mean, I I appreciate you watching Super Cub, which I think is probably another front runner for me of a uh, best show this season. It's up there for me as um, well. Yeah. But this show is just so amazing. Um. And I know you mostly only watch dubs, so uh, unfortunately, oh, yeah. This should get dubbed. I hope it does. Yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised that, uh, I mean, so Crunchy doesn't normally do simul dubs. Uh, mm. Funny does simul dubs, and I think Super Cub is on Funny, right? Yeah. But they're not simul dubbing it, I don't think. I don't think so, but sometimes they... Even when they simul dub, they're like three weeks behind, but yeah. still. Yeah, and sometimes they'll even later than that decide to start dubbing, which yeah. isn't simul dub, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. If there were three shows to pick this season of what to watch, um, this would be one of them. Super Cub would be one of them. We might not agree on what the other one is, but uh, you know, which is which is it makes for a good season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine would probably be Megalobox, but that's a season two. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's a has a higher barrier of entry. Right and and well, and mine would probably be Kumoko. Uh, so I'm a spider. So what? Yeah. Which, it's the second half of the first season, but it started last season. So yeah. Yeah. 
all great shows. Anyway, we should probably talk about Odd Taxi episode <laughs> six now. <laughs> Let's get into those spoilers, shall we? All right. So, uh, yeah, notes that I've got. Uh, we've got the the fanboy, um, the 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 fanboy of the the idol group. Um, yeah, Mystery Kiss is the idol group. You remember his name though? No. Um, I I didn't write it don't down. Don't think I wrote it down. No. Okay. I do like him. He's um... anyway. He won the he won the freaking lottery. I guess. Yeah. Uh, he won a a billion yen. Was it? Yeah, that's what he said. It's a lot. Yeah, but then he's. He hasn't collected it yet. He's still holding on to yeah. the lottery ticket. And he also posted it, a, t- a picture of him holding up the ticket on Twitter or some, some social media. His social media, whatever it is, yeah. And it didn't appear to be uh, um, censored, at, like the ticket itself, you know. Mm. So I don't know if you yeah. have those. No- if, I don't know. I don't know if you just have to have that ticket. It, it, it made me worry, though, when I yeah. saw that. I mean, we find this out because he's telling Odo about it. And Odo's like, oh, well, you know, you better... Don't go around telling people that. He's like, oh, you're the first person that I've told in person. He's like, what do you mean in person? He's like, oh, well, I posted it on, you know, all the social media. Like, (sighs) (laughs) this kid's getting it robbed. We know this. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, so he won a bunch of money. He's going to buy a bunch of Mystery Kiss merchandise with it probably because, you know, what else is he going to do? He's their number one OG fan since the way way back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then I've got, like, Tanaka... uh, tracks Otakawa to a club we're assuming it's a tanaka he's got you know it's a, a mask masked, and skull mask um yeah. yeah and it has a gun and is shooting um, yeah and it doesn't we, really shoot anyone i don't think and we didn't but... know that tanaka found uh nobu's gun and later yes. in the episode nobu confirms that is in fact his gun um so yeah we're pretty sure it's tanaka Pretty sure, but this show is, I don't know. Yeah. I'm reserving a little bit of, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I can't say for sure. So that happened. Um, and, and I guess while we're on that topic, um, Oda. Okay. Actually, we got to back up. It's, it's Odo. You always say Oda. Oh, is it's it not, Odo? Yeah. Odo, Odokawa. Oh, Odokawa. Yeah. Okay. So Odo. Um, Odor. <laughs> Odo, yeah, I'm gonna have to change that. Um, but yeah, so in this episode, also, um, Odo confronts uh, Shirakawa mm, about. Yes, yes, um, I think that's the next note I have, in fact. Yeah, and this kind of ties into everything else that I want to get to. But um, yeah, he confronts her about her relationship with Dobu, and not mm. really like he didn't like she admits to having a romantic relationship with him. They mm-hmm. dated or whatever. In the past, she says. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, that's not even what I... <laughs> I didn't even, wasn't even expecting that. I wasn't even asking you about that, but okay. Um, but she then also admits to, like, helping Dobu to sort of, like, get close to Odo to potentially blackmail him into helping uh, Dobu uh, rob a bank or be, yeah. a, be a getaway driver right. for a bank robbery. Yes. Which is kind of interesting, like... It seems like that whole plan has been dashed, right? Like, cause, um, like Dobu has a lot of other problems now where he's got this kid on the, the hippo kid is yeah. on social media, basically like calling him out and, and saying he's going to catch him and, and pinning all these other crimes on him. And, uh, and Dobu seems like legitimately worried about that. He's not, but like, so yeah. And then the, the so you're on to the next conversation, which is between Odo and Dobu. Um, but in the conversation with um, Shirakawa, mm-hmm. um, she says she eventually admits that Dobu sort of put her up to getting close to Odo, um, which Dobu had denied in the previous episode. Um, anyway, so yeah. we don't necessarily know what the truth of that situation is. That's true. And then um, she says the whole, which is a cliche thing to say, but I do believe her. But Odo does not. But she's, you know, you know, it's the whole cliche thing of like my, my, you know, as a spy, I was mm. assigned to get close to you. Yeah. But then I ended up falling for you. Yeah. Um, and I believe I, I do believe her, but like very and I love that they're doing this. But like Odo fits in with his personality. You know, he's kind of a, a grumpy, you know, um, k- keeps to himself kind of type. Yeah. And he was already very much second guessing her interest in him from the get go. But now that he knows all this other stuff, um, he's like, I'm not buying it at all. And, and it, 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 they have this back and forth, which I really enjoyed of of emotional tension, uh, where you can really, I don't, for me, I could, I I could tell that she 
uh, really cares and is putting herself on the line. But because of the circumstances surrounding, you know, everything that she just admitted, it's yeah. like no, no wonder he wouldn't believe you or even want to reciprocate. It's way too messy of a situation at that point. Yeah, and that's I mean, so I mean that that whole conversation is basically Odo breaking up with Shirakawa. I mean, not that they were dating, but you know him. And saying, he was already trying to break up like, with just, her. <laughs> just stay away from me, just leave me alone, like, don't get involved with me or whatever. And then that, that conversation ends with her saying, I love you, yeah. yet again. Yeah. So I don't think she will give up. Um, I don't know what she'll do. But then I guess she also, she didn't, uh, in a roundabout way, she admitted to stealing uh, the drugs from the clinic. She didn't outright say it, but y yeah, it seemed like she was sort of admitting that she had done things for Dobu um, and that was said immediately after Odo asking her about the drugs that were missing. So yeah, and he sort of presumed. And for some reason, in a shady way, Dobu is shouldering her debt to of nursing school and all that. Um, yeah, in a you know, so she's kind of under his thumb in a way. Yeah. And everything that she's done so far has only paid off the interest on the loan or whatever and yeah. not any of the principal. So she still owes the same amount that she owed at the beginning. So she is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, borrowing money with uh, horrible interest rates. Kakihana. Kakihana. Which ah. is so funny. They only show him in like somebody else is talking and they're kind of showing like other things happening at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and they show him like, going to get another shady loan. Yeah. And and then they show him like eating steak or something, but he's just by himself. Uh and you don't really see him with the uh uh mystery kiss backup singer. Right. The calico cat, whatever her name is. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I just uh I wanted to mention that because I, I made a funny joke. Um he uh he borrows money from a loan shark. I mean loan rhino. All right. That's nice. it. That was my joke. I hope you enjoyed it. They had a perfect opportunity to make that character a shark. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what were they thinking? That's funny. Which I guess we haven't really seen any fish out of water. So no yeah. fish, no birds. Yeah. No. Do they eat fish? Have we seen anyone eating sushi or anything? Maybe. Mm. I don't yeah, they don't remember. They do eat and stuff. Which yeah, like I, I feel like I feel like Kakihana was like eating a steak or something. <laughs> Mm. which you think would be a kind yeah of a, that <laughs> a conflict of uh, somebody's interest someone's uh, yeah <laughs> um and then i guess okay so then to, to tie in the shirakawa stuff then odo meets with dobu after that yes and they sort of they sort of strike up a deal a deal yeah um and then so they already kind of had the terms of the deal and then odo was like wait I want to add one other thing. I want you to, you know, get rid of Shirakawa's debt. Yeah. Which isn't um, uh, unsubstantial. Like, it's right, yeah. a lot of money, yeah. like, um, in the general scheme of things. And Dobu was like, yeah, okay. All right, whatever. And <laughs> I don't buy that for a second. I yeah. think that's going to come uh, back to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, Dobu doesn't seem like a trustworthy person to make a deal with but i mean he would basically say anything to get odo to do what he wants odo to do yeah so, that's basically what he's been trying to do from the beginning is to win him over either by force or by threat or just genuinely yeah or by shirakawa yeah that angle seems to have paid off now not in the way he expected but yeah no but <laughs> still yeah it got him got him where he wants to go it's um, interesting Anyway, uh, what's after that? We've got horse comedian guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, Baba, I wrote down, I guess that's oh, yeah. his name. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, yeah, he's sort of secretly dating the lead singer of Mystery Kiss. Yeah. R Rui, I wrote down, I, I think oh, that's right. I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I put a question mark after it, but I think it's right. Um, and she's a dog, right? I think so. Okay. Because it's interesting. It's like, she's the lead singer. She's a dog. Cute, like, white dog i don't know pomeranian she i don't know i don't know what she is she could be a cat i guess maybe i thought she her ears those, were like but she could be down. one of those cats that's true i thought yeah. I, if she's if she is a dog i find it amusing that like just with the cat and dog that old paradigm of like uh, her two backup singers are not only masked uh but are cats and she's a dog i I, I found myself in this scene thinking about a horse dating a 
dog or cat. <laughs> so I guess I don't know. I don't know how it. I don't know how that kind of stuff works in this world. I guess like because um, she's because they're 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 like hominid bodies, right? Yeah. But like he's got a horse head and she's got like a dog head, and that's basically the identifying characteristic. And of he's that. you know incredible, like towers above her. He's way taller. Yes. Yes. But like if. If they had a child, it wouldn't be half horse, half dog. I mean, it would be technically, but I don't know. I just don't know how it works. It's, it's, <laughs> it's unexplained. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's probably not something that I need to even bother thinking about. because yeah. uh, I think it's there mostly to, uh, like we, we've talked about this too, but like to signify part of their personality, like not as yeah. a whole, but like their general tendencies kind of uh are hinted at i think with yeah. like whatever so, animal they are so then maybe so we've got this this horse and this dog that have a child together for example and it could come out as an orangutan because i don't know like, yeah that could that, be yeah maybe i don't yeah i mean it's unexplained and i don't expect it to be explained but it just you know we haven't seen a lot of like my mind. families together i mean we saw um tanaka and his whole story with the, mm. the erasers and... Yeah, and they're all cats, and, right? Yeah, they're all cats in his family. So mm. it's like, okay. But that's the only, I think that's the only example that I can think of. of yeah, like that's a good point. A close-knit family that we've been introduced to. Huh. But yeah, it's, that's, that's funny. Like, Again, it, it, probably not important at all. Probably won't ever be explained. Probably doesn't even matter. It's just something that like during that scene, I couldn't help but think about like, how's that work then? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, uh, so, yeah, horse comedian, dating, lead singer of Mystery Kiss. Um, and then the other, the other um, counterpart of his uh, radio comedy uh, uh, yes. duo, I don't know his name, but he has a part-time job at the um, host club or mm. uh, where, the, where we think Tanaka... That got shot up. Yeah, yeah. so he, 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 for some reason, he, like was feeling brave enough to confront him, the, this masked guy with a gun. And, mm -hmm. and he didn't actually get shot, but he like shot like right above him. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting that he was involved in all of that as well. But yeah. And then he kind of, he has a little bit of a, a I guess, nihilistic soliloquy about uh, that where he's like, well, it's not really soliloquy because he's talking to someone else, but basically saying, yeah, well, I figured if I died, then, I'd be more famous or something. I don't even remember exactly yeah. what it was, but something like that. Well, he's definitely I... got a complex about uh, his, uh, yeah, about Baba, like getting all the attention yeah. and praise and whatnot. Um, so it's just, it's just yet another uh, uh, layer of a character who has motive to do something, you know, rash. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's sort of at the, I, DGAF stage, I guess. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's true. He's, he's not quite Tanaka level, but he's, uh, yeah, he's kind of, uh, you know, on that, on that edge. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to care too much about norms and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. You so, know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so I guess not a lot actually happened to move the story forward. It was more putting pieces in place, right? Um, yeah. Getting everything where it needs to be to then move the story forward again. So this was a little bit of a setup, a later setup episode, you know, very much like what you would expect in the first couple of episodes. But now they're, they've moved it along and now they're like, all right, well, we need to move some things around again. So let's yeah. just do that real quick. And uh, And I like how they... I don't know the aspect of them resolving some of the stuff with Shirakawa because we were suspecting her of, of lots of different things. Mm. And so the fact that we've confirmed some of them yeah. um, is interesting to me. And like, I, I think she'll still be a, you know, active uh, oh, yeah. she still part has of the story. She still has more story for sure. Yeah. 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 But there's so many other characters that have been introduced that are intertwined that it's, I don't know. It's really interesting. I'm just every every week. Yeah, it's like this is this is at the top of my list of you know of most excited for. Yeah, I definitely look forward to this one as well. Um, yeah. So this episode, I gave a six out of ten. I'm a seven out of ten overall. But this episode, like I say, not 
a lot actually happen. It's just, you know, getting things in place so that things can happen, which I'm looking forward to, but by itself as a standalone, this episode, not super exciting, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. Um, I think I'm just sitting on eight. Um, I think a lot of this show, I mean, it's been very entertaining and enjoyable, but you know, it's so much is going to rely on how it ends. Yeah. Um, and I'm very curious. We're halfway through now. Like if they'll be able to wrap this up, uh, effectively and, and convincingly in that time, or if this, you know, is just the first season of, of more to come. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't have my laptop today, so I don't know how many episodes this one is. I know that there's a few that are extending into next season. I don't, think this is one of them i think this is a 12 or 13 probably not i mean because this one is a is an original uh, mm. uh story so it's not based on anything but yeah i don't know so but, but by that logic it's like it'd probably be best for them to to wrap it up you know tie it in a bow but it'd be kind of cool well, like at least wrap it up to some extent i mean you, yeah. can, you can still leave it open for a sequel i guess but uh yeah i don't know it would be really bold of them to leave like a huge cliffhanger when they don't even know <coughs> if, uh, when they don't even know if it's going to continue, but cause that would really suck. You know, if they are just hoping that they'll get a second season Yeah, and it ends with this, you know, with not having really resolved, uh, yeah, it happens all the time, unfortunately, but, uh, hopefully not with this show. Yeah. I hope so too. And if it sounds interesting at all to you, check it out. Get, get some more eyeballs on this show. It is. It's. A, I mean, it's among our best search terms on YouTube. I mm. think the oh, most sweet. popular search terms. So yeah, I hear yeah. I hear people talking about it a little bit. Not you know, not as much as some of these other heavy hitters, but it's definitely part of the conversation this season. Yeah, people are definitely looking at it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's move on. I suppose we'll uh, we'll check back in next week with our odd taxi. But for now, we have. Uh, Megalobox, season two, Nomad. Nomad. It's a show I'm I'm watching and enjoying greatly. Uh, it's funny that these are back to back, you know, on our on our Sunday episodes because they're my two favorite shows of mm. the uh, of the season so far. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is episode six. We're halfway through. Uh, if you've been following along, um, uh, the main character Joe is now back in his, uh, not his hometown, but it's the town that he established this makeshift family with in the first season. And we kind of learned a little bit uh, last week about how he, a little bit about how he, not betrayed, but he just... Abandoned? He ab- Yeah, he abandoned, uh, essentially. Um, it's revealed in this episode that, that Sachio, the, uh, the, ki- the yeah. younger kid that he's most, or was closest with, uh, at the funeral of their coach, um, he told him you know to leave and never come back and that he's not part of the family anymore Hmm. um and so that kind of gave some weight to joe actually leaving um but then there's still you know it's like you know you just leave because a kid told you not to leave or told you to leave you know and at a funeral when they're emotional and and blah 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 uh but uh but i don't know it's I, i guess i'm just spoiling things but this episode like joe has not been met with uh, open arms, <laughs> quite the opposite, mm. uh, which to be expected, I suppose. Yeah, I think, based on what you've told me anyway. Yeah. Um, and then this episode, um, basically what happens is uh, one, of the, one of the kids, because um, it's like this group of like homeless kids that uh, Joe kind of crossed, path crossed paths with in the first season, and, um, and they end up short- forming this makeshift family. And then in the uh, flashbacks we got, uh, in between seasons, um, there's even more kids. And it was like, you know, they had this kind of, you know, really, you know, good thing going. And so we're, uh, we're with, you know, these, uh, these main kids now kind of grown up to a certain extent. They're like teenage years. And uh, one of them uh, has a Chinese, like a little Chinese uh, restaurant, like a little takeout, Chinese takeout place. Mm. And he, I don't know, they have some unruly customers come in. And it escalates, and Sachio ends up like uh, hitting one of them with like a, a bottle of beer. Mm. Uh, and this person turns out to be a, a megalo boxer. Uh, oh. And Sachio is also boxing. 
in the underground. But uh, I guess we learn in this season too that he's not. Um, he's kind of he's being more like Joe. Uh, at least you know the um, uh, the altruistic parts of like he's not throwing any fights. And he's like trying to do it the right way, um, but he also isn't good, so he's just getting his butt kicked. Um, but anyway, so what happens is because of that, they pit Sachio, uh, the you know the the bosses or whatever these underground fights uh, to get retaliation. They they put uh, Sachio against this like you know huge lumbering guy, you know like we're gonna just demolish you. Mm. And uh, Joe ends up showing up and talking to. Uh, a boss that's higher than these these other these other guys, wow. and so he intervenes and has Joe fight. What I love about it is you expect like okay Joe's just gonna come in, the kids are already pissed at him you know for good reason, and and he's gonna kick butt you know and save you know uh, save the because there was something about the deed to the Chinese place like they had stolen the deed mm, and like they were gonna okay. just like kick you know kick them out of there essentially. And so that was on the line if Sachio could win. But anyway, Joe rolls in and he, you, you assume, I assumed he was going to win. But what, what ends up happening is that uh, he throws the fight to save the, uh, the Chinese restaurant. Oh. So he had already, you know, a, a scene we, you know, uh, conveniently didn't see for dramatic right. purposes. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool in that way. Uh, and then the kids at the end, they're still like, you know, is it supposed to impress us? You know, they're, there, you know. Oh, good job, Joe. You threw a fight. Just yeah. what we would expect of you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have no uh, no moral backbone. Uh, yeah, so he, he essentially can't win, and which makes sense. And I, yeah. I like the aspect of him. And they once again, like, told him to, to you know, kick rocks. Yeah. And, uh, and not, you know, quit wasting his time. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I foresee him just sticking around and continuing to be there for them and or try to be. Uh, but I like, I just like that because it's, you know, it's sort of a trope of, you know, what else can you do when, uh, when you've been shut out of your, of your family, so to speak, mm. and you want to, you want to make up for it. Uh, and it's been years, uh, you know, you just got to kind of take a beating until they come around. Yep. And so I like that it wasn't just like a one and done thing of like, oh my God, you saved the, the restaurant and, but yeah, like let's all hug. Right, it's, uh, it's more lifelike, I think. Uh, yeah, realistic. What I like about this show is I just get lost in it. Similar to Odd Taxi, it's different because it's not a like you know murder mystery uh, yeah. kind of film noir thing. Um, but I just get lost in it and I just enjoy it. It's never a chore, and uh, yeah, I like the journey it's taken me on. So mm. I still have yet to add it. I, I actually thought about it this week. Um, I had some other stuff that I had to watch, but uh, I considered picking this up where I left off on season one, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't done it yet. So um, we'll see if I get to it before the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, honestly, like I liked the first season, the parts that I watched, um, but I just kind of got bored with it. But like the second season sounds so much better. Um than the parts of the first season that I watched. But it also sounds like the first season gets better after I stopped watching. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just left at the wrong time. It could be, yeah. I already like, like this, I gave this episode an eight. Mm. Um, the way I've been doing my ratings is like, it. each episode I rate, the, the newest episode counts for like that episode, but also as a whole. I'm just kind of like merging them into mm. one. I see. Um, but yeah, I think at this point, and we'll see, you know, see how they do, but I... I gave the first season a solid seven, uh, and I, you know, I enjoyed it. Mm. Um, but this one is just kind of taking it to a, a different place, and yeah. and is making me, I don't know, like it's making me really, um, I don't know, it's hitting me emotionally. Where like the first one kind of did, but it was more about the journey, and this is more about the the emotions. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm getting from your uh, descriptions of it every week. Is that yeah, this is much more of a internal struggle for joe than the the first season was it's yeah much more emotional and uh yeah i like that kind of stuff so um yeah i even if if i don't end up picking it up by the end of this season um at some point i will probably try to watch this cool. although i say try to watch this and i've got like 368 
shows on my plan to watch list currently. So fair. We'll see if I get to it. Well, if you ever do, uh, it'd be cool to talk about. Um, I think from what we talked about of the first season that you watched, you didn't maybe didn't quite get into the uh, stuff when Sachio is introduced and. and Yeah, I don't think so. I think that was all, I think that was all later or maybe he had just been introduced. Um, I don't remember how deep I got into the season, like episode wise. Um, but it was mostly about, yeah, Joe struggling to become part of Megalobox, the yeah. big boxing organization thing, and him not being a citizen, so he couldn't do that. And yeah, it's mostly him and the coach, from what I remember. So I don't really remember Sachio or any of the other kids. Like yeah. they were, they were ancillary characters, maybe. So Sachio had probably been introduced. Yeah, but he wasn't like a main part of the story yet, maybe. Yeah, I uh, think, yeah, so. it sounds like maybe you saw the first two or three, because um, after that, yeah. It, so. Yeah, it might have, might have been three. I was going to say three to five probably would mm. be my guess, but it could have only been three, yeah. Yeah, that's my guess, but but yeah. Uh, yeah, if you ever do check that out, it'd be cool to talk about, but uh, yeah, that's, Me- that's Megalobox for this week. Megalobox 2, Nomad, episode six. Which uh, I will add, uh, because in the beginning of this season, he was boxing as Nomad. And mm. so this episode, um, uh, we see him box for the first time as as Gearless Joe. Oh, okay. Uh, instead of so, it's kind of cool too because it, you know it's just significant for him uh, shedding his uh, not only his drug addiction but you know all of his denial about the past and and right you know the identity he had created to mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's fun. I don't know, like making a boxing match like. Yeah, he lost, but it you know it was triumphant in that way. So it's I don't know, mm. it's fun, fun little twist there. But uh, anyway, what what do we got next, Tony? Uh, next up, we have Higehiro. Uh, after being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. Episode number six. Okay, so at the la- at the end of the last episode, let me try that again so you can cut that part out. Okay, so at the end of last episode, uh, they showed a new employee at Sayu's work. Um, they sort of showed him in an ominous way, but we didn't know who he was at that point. Um, but uh, as it turns out, so Sayu goes to work and he's there, and it turns out that he is one of the guys that she had stayed with in her past um, when she was a runaway and was sleeping with random guys to be able to stay at their houses, right? Okay. So her past sort of comes back to haunt her a little bit. And uh, she's worried that, you know, people will find out. And she sort of, he knows her by a different name. I guess she lied about what her name was when she talked to him. Or maybe she's lying about her name now. Or maybe both. I don't know. (laughs) Um, Either way, um, he is like, you're, what what was the name? Miyuki. He's like, you're Miyuki, right? She's like, no, I'm Sayu. I don't know what you're talking about. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, anyway, it's very clearly, you know, someone that she knows. Um, no, you're Miyuki. I know. Yeah. And well, he, he does that, in fact say that. He says, yeah, I remember every girl I've ever slept with. Wow. What and a she's catch. Like, yeah. No, he's, he's a, he sucks. <laughs> um, anyway, so after work, um, he sort of coerces her into inviting him over to her place um where she's staying with uh what's his name uh yamada no that's not it the main dude yoshida yoshida is his name (laughs) sorry i haven't written down i just have trouble with japanese names um anyway so he sort of coerces her saying you know if you if you don't invite me over then i'm gonna tell everyone that you're a runaway and that like you slept with me and all this stuff. And she's like, eh, I can't, you know, she can't deal with that. So she's like, well, if Yoshida says it's okay, then I will invite you over. So she calls Yoshida and says, Hey, I've got, or no, she doesn't call him. She texts him and says, Hey, a a work colleague wants to come over and see the place. He'll be gone by the time you get here. Don't worry about it. Um, so Yoshida says, yeah, I guess. And uh, so she invites this douchebag over <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so basically uh, he's like, okay, well, I've seen your place now. Uh, so why don't we have sex? And she's like, yeah, I'd rather not. And he's like, yeah, no, we're going to have sex. And uh, 
basically yeah. tries to rape her and uh, Yoshida happens to come home at exactly the right moment to stop that and throw the guy out and all that stuff. So yeah, he's a, he's a creepy guy and he, he goes off on Yoshida about like, why would you let a high school girl stay with you? If you're not even going to sleep with her, man, you just, you, you get like, you get off on your own, like, um, like you think you're helping her. And so yeah, what that's are you getting what gets out of you this, off. Yeah. Bro. Essentially. Like that's, that's the, that's the, what he says. Anyway. Yeah. Yoshida throws the guy out and, um, uh, Sayu's, uh, friend at work sort of sees that she's down the next day. And so they go and sort of have a, like a heart to heart talk at like a park about everything. And Sayu kind of lays everything out and tells her, you know, everything. And that, uh, this, uh, douchebag guy was a guy that she had stayed with and slept with and you know, she tells her everything basically and uh she's like well yeah but i mean just because you did it before doesn't mean you can't say no now so you shouldn't feel bad about it and you know the kind mm. of standard platitudes you would expect to hear from uh, a show that's uh, delving into this subject i guess <laughs> um but it's like trying to have a message of like you can you can say no you don't have to yeah i mean it's it's be definitely a slave to your past or Yes, it's it's like the point is that you have a past and you have a future and those don't have to be the same thing, mm. I think. I don't know that they say those exact words, but they say something very, very close to that at some point in the show. So, yeah. So, I mean, it, there, there's, there's some problems with it too because the next day at work when Sayu is there, she essentially forgives the guy for trying to rape her. Um, which I have a problem with. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I don't know. It's, it's uncomfortable at moments and, uh, it doesn't hit real hard with the drama and the feels and stuff like what it's trying to do. Mm. Um, but it's still, it, it if you ignore this whole new character rapey business and stuff like that, the, uh, relationship non-romantic familial sort of relationship that is developing between yoshida and sayu is very uh sweet and comforting and nice and enjoyable to watch um all the other stuff going on is you know just uh trials and tribulations that uh that sort of relationship uh faces i guess i don't know uh, i do still find it enjoyable um mm. i would give this episode and I think every other episode a six out of 10. It still hasn't wowed me, but it's, it's doing all right. You know, it's not just meh. It's like, eh, it's doing all right. It's, it's holding its own. It's trying a lot of times not succeeding, but, mm. um, yeah, it, it, it feels okay. Yeah. That's about all I have to say about that, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. So dealing with these uh, sort of themes, these darker um, kind of, I don't know, things that are going on with her past and all that, like, mm. could be handled better, like, in a more, like, dramatically, um, like, like a more emotional way, or, I don't know, yeah. it's like... Yeah, really, it's like, they just, they sort of unload this on you about um, her past, which we already knew about, I guess, but, like the emotional response from the characters sometimes feels inauthentic. Mm. Um, and a lot of it is just set up to allow the characters to have conversations between each other um, where violins are playing, you know, where you've got <laughs> like that, this is the dramatic moment in case you didn't recognize it, yeah. which, which you might not because it's very often like what they're saying uh, doesn't, mm. doesn't jive with the violins uh, that well. Like they're, they're yeah. trying hard to make this, you know, like weepy, dramatic stuff. And it's dramatic, but it's not very weepy mm. at, at this point, you know. Okay. Not... Like it's just, I, it's not a strong emotional connection to the emotions that they're trying to convey, I mm. guess. Um, yeah. Okay. But it's, it's doing all right. It's nearly there. It could get better. It could get worse. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold out for <laughs> okay. the. It could get better. Um, so halfway or roughly halfway in, but you're you're. Uh, yeah, we're we're six of I assume twelve or thirteen. Yeah. So yeah, roughly halfway in, and uh, 
yeah and it's it's fine um it yeah again could get better and i'm hoping for that yeah um if it stays the way it is i'll probably still watch the whole thing just constantly hoping it gets better yeah um but it's not bad it's not like uh, something that's bad that i'm hoping gets better because i'm going to drop it otherwise um it's fine and i would like it to get better but even if it stays the way that it is then it's it's just a fine show that uh you know i could have done without i suppose but uh i don't i won't regret watching it i don't think I can, uh, not in the same way, different shows, but I relate, uh, I brought this up earlier this week with uh, those Snow White notes, and I think uh, that Mm. your description uh, is very uh, uh, apt to how I feel about that show, where Mm. it's like, I'm not looking to drop it, it's fine, I wish it would get a little better, Uh, but I'm going to, I'm here, I'm basically here for it, so. Yeah, I think, I think I, the difference between these two for me would be that I think I emotionally identify or at least emotionally understand more of the characters in this show than I do in those Snow White notes. Like I'm just starting to, uh, as I, as I said, you know, two episodes ago, um, I'm just starting to identify with or understand or feel for Maeda um, and not so much any other characters, but the characters in this show, like they all, their feelings are authentic. They feel authentic. It's just the way that they talk about them that feels inauthentic, I guess. It's not um, as impactful as it, the show thinks it is, maybe. Like, they just they, they dwell on it a little too much, and then mm. like, they're, they're sort of rubbing it. Like they, they're like, oh, we know we got you a little bit here emotionally. You know? we, we got the feels in there, so we're going to really grind it in now. <laughs> and they, and they, they don't. They never, they never succeed in that. Every time mm. they try to do that, it's yeah it's very obvious that they're trying and it it, it sort of loses its impact right yeah um so even that that very small emotional connection i have with the characters stays but it doesn't ever get any deeper because they the way they're trying to deepen that connection um doesn't work they they sort of fail at it um okay yeah anyway um that's uh Probably about five minutes more talk about Hige Hero than we needed. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on? Yes. Our next show is uh, Yakimo. Let's make a mug too. It's the pottery slice of life show. Yes. And uh, if you've been uh, following along, I was uh, quite disappointed with last week's episode. Uh, <laughs> Tony and I disagree. Not that he was in love with it. Um, but it was a departure from the actual pottery, and that's kind of with this show so far. I, I do like the characters, but it's like kind of why I'm interested in it. I mean, it, it is. It is why I'm interested in it. I, I'm assuming you like this week a little bit better than. Oh yes, yeah. For me, okay. for me, this this basically uh, contextualizes last week's episode is a is just a misstep, and now we're back on track. Um, and I really liked it actually. It was, it was, it was a breather filler sort of thing, you know, like, I suppose, oh, yeah. let's, uh, let's take a break. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much like taking a break, uh, from the pottery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I was like, really? I mean, cause it's that intense. Um, <laughs> so with this episode, I mean, they're shorter episodes, but, um, very short. I felt this episode was very short. Like it. Yeah. It ended way too rapidly for me, I think. Yeah, but. it was over pretty quick. Um, but I wrote down the name of the main character. Her name is uh, Himeno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I still don't have any character names written down. So. Right? That's the only one I have. Episode Good 6. Job. Finally establishing that. Um, but so this kind of uh, uh, expounds upon uh, the legacy that her mom left in the pottery world. Which I'm kind of bothered by this, but like, because I wrote this down, like her dad, um, her mom died when she was really young, right? And so when she first, mm. I ended up watching the rewatching the first episode of this show because I was showing it to my mom mm. uh, over Mother's Day, uh, and she, you know, is very much into pottery, and she was very curious about it. But in that episode, she walks when she first walks in the pottery club, she likes uh, the scent of of wet clay, kind of gives her like a sensory memory. Uh, flashback or recall yeah uh, and she doesn't really understand why but it's to her mom you know who 
was like a world class potter, but like she never knew this until that moment. And her dad just kept her. I mean, they have a shrine to the mom, like in the house and stuff. She knows her mom is dead, but she doesn't, she's like completely oblivious to anything her mom did, mm. even though they have all these like really fancy mugs and stuff that she made. Yeah. Um, but anyway, in this episode, um, Himeno is kind of tasked with going uh, to this, um, I don't know what it is. It's like this uh, old, like, building that they used it's to... It's an old building behind the school that used to be a residence of some famous um, ceramicist. Is that okay. A um, <laughs> I'll take it. But before that, um, there's a there's a contest on. That's the first thing they talk about in oh, this yeah. episode is yeah. the, the contest. And uh, everyone seems to know what they're going to do except Jimeno. And then uh, that sort of leads into this next part where she... Um, yeah she sees some some interesting ceramics but uh but yes this building behind the school was a, a house of uh, someone who was famous in the region for doing uh, ceramics pottery stuff yeah um and the city owns it and has been sort of debating what to do for it with it for a long time because i guess it's considered a historical site so they can't like tear it down or anything like that um, and recently the city has decided that this, uh, is going to become a, uh, museum of youth pottery, I yes. believe is how they say it. Well, the, the little display, yeah, uh, you know, items, uh, pieces that have been, yeah, uh, made potteries by, of the youths. Yeah. <laughs> but specifically from, you know, in this town. Yeah. And very probably, famous for and probably pottery. largely from this school that is like right next to it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so she, on her way to that, for some reason there, um, yeah, I didn't get that either. Yeah. This, <laughs> who, uh, who's guiding her? I forget. It's her teacher. Oh, it's a teacher. The, the, yeah. The, the one they stalked. The one that they stalked, who is the, the, the club sponsor or whatever you would call it. The, the teacher who's in charge of the club, I guess, basically. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing here's my take on it because they get to it. They're walking to that building yeah. and there's like a fork in the road yeah. and the teacher's like, well, I'm going to go this way. You should go that way. Well, she says like, I'm going to go this way, but I have to meet up with someone else. So I'm, I think she says like, I'm going to wait here for that person. And then we're going to take this short path, but you should take that longer path because there's all kinds of cool stuff More to scenic. see or something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. Um, because she had extra time uh yeah i don't know it was weird it was contrived but yeah well i'm thinking in in hindsight that the teacher knew you know she knows who her mom is and she also knows that she that himeno doesn't know a lot about what her mom did and yeah. and and stuff she made so anyway uh she comes himeno goes on this path and she comes across uh this uh well first she hears like this very uh enchanting sound yeah and she sees a lot of kappas well not actual oh, yes. kappas but ceramic kappas yeah there's a bunch of like kind of leading the uh, path yeah. yeah which is like a, a good omen or a sign of i don't know it's like they're very happy i don't know what they mean in japan but I was assuming I, I don't that know. they I think something. I think they steal your soul out of your butt or something. <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> but she seems so happy. She took pictures of all of them. Um, but she uh it's very windy up there, which I assume is normal, but she gets to this um very which I really liked, it was my favorite part, but uh this very uh artistic giant sculpture. Um mm -hmm. this uh pottery, you know, ceramic sculpture mm -hmm. um that has this very like sort of uh very colorful uh, uh glaze on it yeah. um it's kind of it's almost kind of trippy kind of psychedelic and so, uh, yeah Mul it, i mean she says something like uh it changes color depending on the light and mm -hmm. where you are and stuff like that so it's like an iridescent glaze of some sort right yeah that's yeah. a good word yeah iridescent and it also it's like designed to um because it's so windy there, I think it was placed there on purpose, uh, purposefully, where it's it's designed to you know sort of interact with the wind, where it creates mm -hmm. this this sort of uh, sound that's mm -hmm. uh, was very I don't know it was enchanting. Like when she comes across it, uh, it's sort of this whole moment, um, and she doesn't know that her mom made it, um, but I don't know. I felt it. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it seemed like they drew it out a little bit longer than you know the, the, her moment of like seeing it and like all the angles and like yeah. they spent a lot of time on like showing that and 
It's true. I didn't think it was quite as impactful as they uh, set it up to be, but uh, yeah, I mean, mm. as it turns out, later we find out it's a sculpture that her mom made, and so therefore, yeah. I guess it makes sense that they spend as much time on it as they did. Yeah, and I know it's it's sweet. I mean, it's a very simple show, and it's they're shorter episodes, and so they don't have the t we've talked about this before, but they don't have the time to like really delve into these characters and their emotions and they kind of yeah. do like bullet points at, at some points, I think. Yeah. Um, but I like, I like that aspect of it. And I imagine, like I was saying earlier, the teacher, I don't know, maybe I'm giving it too much credit, but like, you know, knew that that sculpture was there knew that her mom made it and also knew that she didn't know about it. She had never been up there. So she, mm. I'm assuming, she, you know, giving her the benefit yeah. of the doubt, she was like, Oh yeah, you should go over there. And, and you know, have yeah. a moment, uh, you know, you know, just you and in, in, in your I, mom's art. Yeah, I got that. I got that impression too that it was intentional on the teacher's part. And then mm. after that, she gets up to the 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 house, the former house, future museum, and uh, it's like a mansion. It's huge. She reads some books about, or she looks at some books about pottery and sees like pottery that her mother did and mm. stuff like that. And then the episode very suddenly ends. Yep, it's just over. It just yeah credits. <laughs> um, what do you what do you think about uh, this main character Himeno, her dad? Like, what is up with? I mean, why do you think he kept her in the dark about all the pottery you know that her mom did? Like, I I just don't understand why. I mean, so they they sort of allude to it earlier um, in, in episode one or two. I don't remember. Um, but I mean, he he doesn't really want her to get into pottery because her mother was so obsessed with it that it uh i believe may be considered to have been responsible for her death because she she put so much into it that she you know didn't sleep enough or whatever mm -hmm. she didn't take care of herself enough um and so yeah i i think that's his problem with the pottery is that uh while his wife made this great pottery and was super famous it sort of it consumed her and uh and i think he feels that it w it is responsible uh for her oh, wow. her early demise maybe yeah i was kind of getting that something with that too not not that it was explained at all but uh it was but just it, really just sort of hinted at a little yeah, bit and, a and i'm reading a lot in between the lines to get yeah. up there but no i i think you're i think you're onto something there but it's just weird because it's like he had a job doing something else in the city, like, I don't know, and that went belly up, and so they move back to the mom's hometown, mm. and he opens up a cafe, and he uses you know, the mom's, you know, legendary pottery as mugs and, and cups and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, he can't really be surprised that not only is Jimeno, like, learning about pottery in this very pottery-famous right city yeah uh but that she's also like showing an interest in it because mm -hmm. her mom did it uh, but it's like now that i mean we're this is episode six so it's like now that, <laughs> now that you know Jimeno's all into the pottery and has made him pottery um you know you, you i don't know you just think a dad would be like all right well let me let me show you around you know let me show you all the pottery your mom's done and how impactful but yeah. but i guess it would take away from like her like uh learning ab about it on her own uh, you know, just out and about at school and, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I mean, the conversation that they have afterward is a little bit awkward, I guess, in that, like, she's, like, telling him about this, you know, sculpture that she saw um, that her mom made. And he's like, oh, you saw that? Oh, yeah, I thought it was really cool when I saw it before, too. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's it, his his lack of explanation. I, it It doesn't not make sense. Um, it sort of makes sense to me in that, like, um, your child's mother dies. What do you tell your child about their mother? Do you tell them about some sculpture that they made that's on a hill in a town that you don't live in, or now you do, but you didn't then? Um, you tell them about, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm with you in the first part, but it's like now you do live there. Right, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess that might be a whole episode in and of itself, or, maybe. you know, with this short format, maybe three episodes where they, you know, go <laughs> around and explore. Um, that could be. I don't know. And perhaps, I mean, it, like this show, 
it's just trying to be light and not really yeah. be you know it's not trying so it's probably doesn't deserve to be under this kind of scrutiny <laughs> but mm. it's but that's what bothers me about it because i do like the show but like i feel like it's trying to dabble with these more dramatic elements of like deeper characterizations and mm. like an emotional undercurrent but it's not really delivering it it's just yeah. kind of like telling us about it's not it. really diving into them it's just being like oh yeah that is yeah. there that exists yeah that's it her dad has issues and yeah there's you know we don't know how the mom died but like i don't know if that's i mean maybe it'll be revealed but i feel like even if it is it's not going to be like a heart-wrenching yeah, uh, tale it's just going to be yeah. like oh yeah that happened i don't think there's anything super impactful like that coming in the show super dramatic or anything like that um if you're looking to this show for that, I think you'd be disappointed. But I think um, I'm not looking to it for that, except in the fact that I feel like the show is setting some of that stuff up. Like, it's teasing yeah. it. Yeah. But it's not, like, because that's why I, we don't have to dwell too much longer on it's, this. But, it's trying to have a little of everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And I, I, for me, I feel like it'd be better off if it just, like, focused on the hobby and, like, the girls' you know, interactions. Instead mm. of like trying to put on this all, all all this emotional weight of her mom and and all these things, but it does lead to seeing interesting types of pottery and and her learning more about her mom, mom's hometown. So yeah, I don't know. I I'm being too harsh, but these are just things that I think about when I uh, watch it. So yeah, I mean I I don't disagree. Like they they definitely are putting on airs of a drama without addressing any of the drama that they are attempting to introduce um i don't know if you read enough between the lines you might get some more emotional stuff out of it but uh mm. yeah i guess if you read between the lines you might get some more pottery out of it too <laughs> oh. perhaps um anyway so this is a a shorter program with uh, a anime portion uh, which we have talked about and then there's a live action portion which george likes more than the anime portion according to what he said last week so how'd you feel about this this week how well that our, yeah last, week, our I, live last week i did um it was okay i i was uh happy they were wearing different clothes in some of the segments oh, i didn't even notice <laughs> okay <laughs> um yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to... I didn't really... That's all I wrote. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, here's what I have. Uh, the Seiyus visit an old castle slash shrine. Mm, okay. Which apparently the characters had also visited in the show or are going to visit. I'm actually unclear on whether they're mm. outside of the timeline of what we've seen in the show so oh, far. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do feel like the live action is better pacing than the... <laughs> um, and then they go and get some coffee. That's true. I can't remember, my favorite parts are, we've talked about before, are definitely the moments where they're kind of just like, you know, shooting the breeze. Yeah, not, not much this time. There was a little bit, though, because I, like, I felt like they were kind of getting a little looser, where they were like laughing more and, and like genuinely laughing more. When they were at the coffee shop, I guess, because the coffee shop was called something Yuki, and one of the, one of the actresses' names is Yuki, mm. and so they were joking about that. Yeah, and, uh, joshing around and... But they didn't. They didn't really talk about like in in the past. It's always been them talking about when they were younger and talking about their own lives and stuff mm. like that. And they didn't do a lot of that this time. But they that's true. They were joking around at the coffee shop and stuff. Yeah, about, just kind of having fun and about lattes and coffees and whatnot. I have more expectations of the actual show than I do these live action. Bits. Yeah. Well, so I think when I watch those, fair enough. I, <laughs> but I think when I watch those, I'm like more pleasantly surprised. <laughs> than than uh than for the show but uh, but that's not to say i i dislike the show because i i'm still watching it so that's mm. something yeah and it's it's fine it's again still not spe spectacular or anything but uh you know maybe it'll get there probably won't i don't know yeah and I, i'm harsh on it but the act the act of watching it is very uh easy it's a very you know it's very light and it goes down smooth like it's not uh it's not a chore at all so like I really can't complain too much. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, there's no expectations from it. I expect it to suck, and it it mostly doesn't. So, <laughs> I guess uh, I'm pleasantly surprised as well. 
Well, I expect pottery, so keep it up. Yeah, well, we didn't see any pottery in the live action segment this time. So. Oh, that's I, I'm talking about the anime, sorry. Oh, no, I was talking about the live action oh. segment. I expect that to suck. The <laughs> anime, I expect to just be what it is, which oh, yes. is what it has been and will probably continue to be, so um anyway uh that's enough talking about uh clay and pottery and whatnots we've got uh the saint's magic power is omnipotent is our next show episode number six and uh i fell behind this week because i've you know been basically exhausted every day since i got my covid shot um so i overslept and i didn't get to watch this before we started recording today so george and i watched it together and i failed to take any notes um but i'm here for you and i have a terrible memory so i'm gonna ask george to start this one off (laughs) fair enough i mean uh disclosure uh this is the first episode i've seen (laughs) of this show you have not watched the previous five episodes but i have told you about them i've described them to you in immaculate detail that's true and out of all the shows that you're um i mean this isn't the only one but I'm, i'm i'm glad it was this one um yeah, uh, so I don't know any of the names, but okay. our main character... Say. Say, that's right. Um, I know all the names, so I can help you with that. Well, I remembered from last uh, week when you were telling me that she was going to be tutored by this grand mage oh, type. Oh, yes, the grand magus, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but... I don't know what that noise was. I think it's just the headphones. Oh, uh, I think it's me. Am I still working? Okay. I mean, I don't think it was the microphones because it doesn't look like it came through on the recording at all. I think it oh, was okay. just the headphone amp. Um, oh, okay. Being weird. I, I pulled, I tugged on oh, this a little you? bit and that's oh, when I started okay. doing it. Um, uh, yes. So as I recalled from last week, the Grand uh, Magus. 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 Yeah. Uh, was going to tutor her, tutor say. Yes. She, he... The, the king uh, granted her wish to have a magic tutor. And, uh, of course, the person that he assigned is the most powerful magician in the entire kingdom, the, the Grand Magus. Yeah. But then didn't, let, like, previously, last week or something, she had, like, schooled him on something or, like, had, like, proven that she... No, it was... So what happened last week is he... Uh, well, he came out of his coma... Um, oh, so that was the guy in, in the coma. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So he had been. I was in... picturing like an old guy with a beard or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which you would, but uh, yeah, not he's, in this show. He's quite attractive. Yeah, he's a, he's a younger fella. But anyway, um, yeah. So he's the one who summoned the saint and the other girl, whichever one is which. And she not has not sure. been revealed. The other one. The other one we've seen before. Oh, you've yeah, seen her. Yeah, okay. she's the, she's the one that uh, the prince is assuming is the saint, or has assumed is the saint, and kind of everyone is now assuming that Say is the saint. But Say hasn't met her. They well, I mean, they they briefly met when they were first summoned. I mean, oh, okay. not really met, but saw each other, and I think they may have had one interaction since then. Okay, if I remember right, um, but very brief. Um, but yeah, so. The king assigns the Grand Magus to be her magic tutor um, because she's super powerful. Uh, the thing that you're remembering uh, was that he, the most powerful magic user in the land, attempts to appraise Say to find out if she's the saint. Oh, yes. But he is blocked because her magic power is higher than his, basically. Mm, okay. Um, but so, she'll, she still needs training to harness her magic power. Yeah, she still doesn't know how to use it. Yeah. And he's, you know, the greatest magic user in the land, so who, who better to learn from, I suppose, right? And so that's why he says in this episode, like, I, the reason you're here is I want to study and uh, learn about your, your power and your ability. Right, right. So he didn't agree to this just uh, because, well, I, I was going to say he didn't agree to this just because she's the saint, but I mean, that's... It's true. He did, in fact, agree to this just because she's the saint, but mostly because in training her, he will be able to learn more about her magical abilities and why she is so much powerful uh, than anyone else that has had the amount of training that she's had, basically. Um, Yeah. Mm. So that's like the first part that we start off with is the Grand Magus sort of training her, and we go on with that for a while. 
with her doing different things and then eventually sort of uh, refining her magical power or her ability to use the magic. Um, and she's mostly doing like healing magic. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be what he is requesting of her is just to, you know, use healing magic sort of over and over. Um, and to get faster at it, it seems to be what he's saying. Like, yeah. you need to do it faster. I don't know. And then she, later on, she did it. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, good job. <laughs> but it didn't seem any faster to me. But Yeah, um, that's true. But does can she do other magic? Or is he just having her focus on the healing magic? Yeah, I mean, so like one of the first things that she does in the show is she's making potions and stuff. Like oh, that's yes. how she gets involved with the research institute is uh, making yeah. But that, does potions. that involve magic? Or it's like an yeah, alchemy yeah. kind of so thing? So you, you take like the herbs and stuff and you put them into water or whatever, I guess. And then you have to put some magic into it. And during this episode, he, later in the episode, he asks her to, uh, he said, before I know that, you know, another magic user has sort of given you some of their magic, like, you know, put some magic into you. Um, can you do the same thing? And then he does or she does that. She sort of gives some of her magic power to him, or I don't know exactly how it works, but she transfers some some magic into him. Yeah. Um, and that's very much the same sort of uh, thing that they do with the potions. You know, they okay. just sort of transfer some magic into them. Okay. Um, and that's why her potions were so much more powerful, and now she's banned from making potions and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, and then uh, I after like all of that stuff with him... She uh, meets up with the Ice Knight, uh, future boyfriend guy. Um, he was not referred to as the Ice Knight. Yeah, they just call him Commander Hawk in, oh, okay. this, uh, in this episode, which is which is his proper name. But oh, okay. it, very early on, he's referred to as the Ice Knight, but he's he's more often referred to as Commander Hawk. Okay. Um, anyway, so Commander Hawk, who actually happens to be the Grand Magus's brother, I believe, if I remember right. Um, you look like. You don't remember me Somebody, saying Somebody, yeah, you did say that, but then we were like, oh, is it? Is it that? Um, but yeah, maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's the only episode I've seen, but uh, somebody is someone's sure. brother. Yes, yes. <laughs> Init initially, when we were watching it, I think I told you that the, uh, the leader of the research institute was the Grand Magus's brother, because uh, I was confused. Mm. But you think but it's the Ice Knight? I'm pretty sure it's Commander Hawk, because I'm pretty sure that the Grand Magus's last name is Hawk as well. Um, anyway, she, uh, she, she ends up talking to him, uh, Commander Hawk, the Ice Knight, uh, future boyfriend material guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, they just sort of have a chat and, uh, he says, you know, the, uh, the season of, uh, parties and, uh, get togethers and stuff is, is coming upon us and, uh, you being, probably the most famous person in the entire kingdom at this moment, um, being that you're the, uh, the saint, um, you'll probably be invited to a lot of these parties. And, uh, if you do get invited, uh, I'd like to be your date. And, uh, yeah, he's smooth. <laughs> and, uh, and she, you know, for a moment is taken aback and like, Oh my God, really? This guy wants to go on a date with me. Woo um, she's not, she's not, she's not a hillbilly. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Yuck. I don't know why I went that way with her, but, um, she does. Anyway, she's yeah. very amusing and like, cause it's like, from what I've heard from the show so far, it's, she can, she does everything amazingly, right? She's just great at everything she does. And so, yeah. uh, it was, it was well, kind of not my takeaway. Like, not like great, but she's like better than most. Yeah. She, yeah. she keeps exceeding expectations, like yes. no matter what she's doing. Yes. Um, but it was funny to see like how her personality is, uh, having heard, you know, about all of that, uh, cause she's very much like, seems anxious and seems unsure of herself. And mm. like, even when people are praising her, she's like, uh, like she makes a lot of, uh, dopey faces of like, <laughs> <laughs> of either like not knowing what's happening or like, I don't know, reading into situations, you know, too yeah. much or something, but yeah, she's very sweet. Yeah. 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 She seemed cool. I, I, I liked her. I, uh, it was just, it was amusing. I mean, because obviously, like, if she was just full of herself and was like, yeah, I can do everything, like, right. that would... Uh, yeah, not, she would suck. Yeah, be a very un <laughs> unlikable character. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. But I liked how she seemed almost, like, uh, haphazard or, like, 
awkward, you know? Well, in the romantic affairs? Well, with that, but just kind of in general, like uh, the the later part we get to, which uh, uh, she goes on a a trial of sort of, uh, not a date, but a trial like um, for, you know, being fancy. Get uh, together thing. <laughs> she she goes and she meets with her, her friend Liz from the library. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's cer- certain scenes in there where they have a they have a tea party. Yeah, just on a veranda or not a veranda, a two person tea party. Yeah, they just they have a cup of tea together on a gazebo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, but yeah, the certain things like Liz was telling her, which certainly wasn't like a romantic thing, but uh, she was say was still pretty much you know was doing similar things, having similar facial reactions and like internal monologue of mm. of like uh, I don't know, just being unsure of herself or or being or feeling uh, awkward, but. I, I liked I liked well, I, it. I remember her being somewhat pensive during that scene because I mean they were talking about the other potential saint, and uh, there were some allusions made to the fact that uh, the prince, who is uh, betrothed to Liz, um, is uh, is taking too keen an interest in the uh, the other potential saint person, yeah. um, being sort of enchanted by her, and then uh, say is sort of saying, well, you know, the place that we came from, Japan, things are different than they are here. And yeah, I remember her being somewhat pensive. I don't remember her being... Hmm. Well, it's like she's... I don't know. I guess it plays into her sweetness because it's not... I still don't really understand if she wants to be the saint, but um, if she does... Well, that's a good question, <laughs> If she does, she's clearly not like... She's she's very... she's. Um, I I think she doesn't care if she's the saint yeah i think at the beginning it was assumed that she wasn't by others and she sort of adapted to that and said all right i'm not the saint that's fine i'm just gonna make a chill life for myself i'm gonna go work at this research institute and then like things happen and things happen and things happen and it becomes more and more apparent that she probably is the saint Mm. and i think She's not super ready to embrace that, mm. but she realizes that at some point she's going to have to. Yeah, do something. Um, so she's, you know, baby steps, sort of, you know, learning more magic power. Like some, one of the conversations she has with the Grand Magus is about how, well, I assume it's the saint's responsibility to go out on uh, missions with uh, the troops. Uh, and I assume that I'm going to have to do that at some point um, because she is also assuming that she's the saint at this point. Uh, so, yeah, so she's not super embracing it. Like, I think she would much rather find out that she wasn't the saint. Um, at least everything leading up to this has led yeah. us to believe that she would much rather just not be the saint, just live at the research institute, do her, you know, learn the magic and sort of adapt to the world. Um, but I think she's starting to accept the fact that it's very likely that she is and that mm. she's going to have more responsibility than she wants. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I took that as her, well, when she was sort of defending the other girl that was summoned, that could mm. also be the saint. Is that at this point? Yeah. So they were both summoned at the same time. One of them is the saint. I early on, I assume maybe both of them were saints somehow or, but it seems very much like that one of them was the saint and one of them was just completely accidental. Okay. And they didn't know which was which. The yeah. prince, you know, chose the other girl and said, oh, this must be the saint because she's prettier or something, I think, is what he said. Um, and basically ignored Say, our main girl. And then Say went off to the research institute and everything. Mm-hmm. And he's been sort of training this other potential saint. Um, anyway, sorry, what were you going to say? But at this point, we assume that Say is the saint, but we don't know that for sure. Yeah, essentially in this world there is no way to know that for sure. Okay. Because um, the only way they have to know that is to have the Grand Magus appraise her and he can't. Okay, yeah. Literally cannot. Yeah. Um so yeah, I guess suffice to say like when she's ha- uh, talking to Liz at their tea party mm-hmm. and this other person, you know, this uh, other possible saint comes up. She seems very like not defensive of her, but like uh, well, trying to rationalize, you know, you know, Liz's concern of she's kind of attracting uh, too many, too many dudes. Yes. And she's attracting many suitors. One of whom is, is the prince who is uh, engaged to Liz. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think part of that is that 
I mean, they're both Japanese that were summoned to this world. So I think Say identifies with her somewhat in yeah. that, like, I mean, Say says, like, when I first came to this world, I didn't know that it was inappropriate to do this or this, you know? Yeah. And I'm just assuming that this other girl doesn't know that what she's doing is inappropriate and maybe someone should tell her. Yeah. Um, well, I think Say says, you know, maybe if they're, you know, one of the guys should tell her that what she's doing is inappropriate. And Liz says, well, if there were any gentlemen among her, this wouldn't be a problem. Burn! So, um, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I guess I was just trying to read into her intentions because she seems very, say, seems very um, uh, well-meaning. Mm -hmm. And so I assume that she's just, she doesn't have an ulterior motive, but she's just trying to, uh, you know, explain, like, how, how this other girl might be yeah, approaching I mean... things. In, in, versus, like, if she didn't want to be the saint and but didn't want this girl to be discluded is trying to you know rationalize mm, her see. behavior to you know maybe i'm looking yeah, too much no, into I, it I, but... I think i think actuality of it is say is mostly just trying to make liz feel better mm. in that um she's not trying to steal your fiance liz she just yeah. doesn't know any better yeah you know she doesn't think that she's doing that if she knew that she was doing that, she probably wouldn't be doing that and sort of rationalize it as we came from the same place. But at the same time, I think she is defensive of the other girl that was summoned because Say has kind of gotten, I mean, she was pulled into this world suddenly yeah. and has had to adapt. And it's the only I other think, person that she, I can... think she really feels for this other girl who, you know, not only was she, you know, pulled out of her reality and summoned to this other world, she was immediately um, identified as this, super powerful being the saint um and has been treated as such since she got there mm. um so yeah i think i think say feels sorry for the for the other girl yeah uh, to some fair. extent um yeah i don't know uh we've talked about that for a long time uh, probably because we both watched the episode and, and yeah, i had a lot of questions and you didn't watch the first five episodes so <laughs> there was some catching up to do um but yeah i think that was a good discussion if not a bit lengthy um how does that episode end? Yeah, it's just the tea party with Liz, and then that's uh, pretty it's much another, it, right? There's been a few episodes this uh, week that just ended abruptly, and to me, that was one of them. <laughs> it was. It didn't. I, you you indicated when it ended that it was oh oh it's over, and I <laughs> I uh, I had been expecting it to be over for about a minute or thirty seconds or something like that. Oh, I'm okay. like, okay, I I feel this is sort of coming to a close now. Um, just in their conversation, but uh, yeah, it, it felt like a normal ending for me but it, yeah it didn't really resolve or wrap anything up or anything it's it's yeah a pretty no cliffhanger ended ongoing uh, yeah. sort of story yeah um but yeah that's the saint's magic power is omnipotent episode six and uh, we talked about it for plenty of time probably more than half of this episode in all fact. the time um next up We've got, well, we were talking earlier about emotional connections with characters and uh, weepy dramas. Um, we got one that succeeds. To your eternity. Yeah. Uh, Umetsu no Anata-e. Yeah. Episode five. I feel like... Do we need to, like, go spoiler-free on this one? Um... Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? You think we? Uh, I mean, I think keep it brief. I think the thing that we're trying not to spoil has already happened once and is going to happen again. Um, so I don't know how important it is, but uh... <laughs> ah, let's spoil it. All right. <laughs> Why not? All right. At well... this point. Sure. I mean, if you if you have not been watching uh, To Your Eternity, I would encourage you to go back, start watching from episode one, and get up to episode five before you listen to us talk about this. And if you don't, that's on you. And some people, you know, like to uh, just follow along and on the podcast. That's so. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not recommending. It. So powerful, I think that uh, I don't know. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should watch it. You should experience it more than just hear about it. Although I, I would say watch Odd Taxi before this, but hey, this is still good. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I got a bit weepy at this one. Oh, so. did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We, we might have felt a little differently. Not that I was negative, but hmm. um, we'll shoot. Um, so last week, uh, they, I mean, they hadn't escaped, but they had, you know, uh, yeah. Nene, Nene had uh, done the work to allow them to escape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I got her name this week. I didn't write it down, but I oh, got really? it in my head. Perona. Oh, is that? Yeah, that does sound right. Yeah, I don't Perona. Know. Yeah. So That's yeah, the she older sister's name. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, she uh, you know effectively breaks uh, everyone out of their respective cages, their yeah. prisons, prison cells, and uh, and then they make their way out, and uh, Oniguma is there, like dead or. Maybe not dead. I don't know. It's not clear. Well, he, no, he he had died in the previous episode. Okay, Remember, we, we were talking about it where like um, uh, Fushi is going around saying "itai, itai, itai," and yeah. she and and March is like sort of caressing the bear and pulling the the uh, arrows out and stuff like that, saying yeah. it's okay. And then there's a, sort of this dramatic pause, and uh, Fushi looks at her and says "arigato," and that was him sort of emoting for the bear who yeah. couldn't emote for himself and the arigato was him saying you know thank you for being kind to me i'm out now i'm gone yeah yeah so so he had died and i think it was even even addressed uh by bad girl leader um that he had died or something but uh yeah i don't remember that but uh but yeah fair. I, I assumed he had died um but i don't know it's interesting in this scene because like uh, they're taking the old lady with them, uh, yeah. who's also uh, in shackles and whatnot, and uh, and so she kind of gives March to her and is like, you know, you guys go on ahead with uh, with uh, Fuchan and and mm -hmm. I'll I'll meet up with you. And she wants to get a piece of Oniguma, bring mm -hmm. back to the village uh, as proof, which I don't, you know, I don't know. You kind of need a big piece to really prove that. But all right, so I have to admit to something now in that. Uh... Last week, I hadn't read the manga, um, mm. and so I, I caught up on oh, last nice. week's um, episode, the, the manga that last week's episode covered, uh, and I didn't stop. Nice. So I read well into this episode before mm. I watched this episode. Okay. So in the manga, they it, it's set up a lot better. Um, mm. Like, there's so much more, like, internal monologues with the characters mm -hmm. and um yeah so it, it's much more clear what's going on what, here. what got you emotionally then was it the anime or was it the manga uh so i didn't read that far forward oh, in okay. the manga oh, okay um i at some point stopped probably i know exactly at which point i stopped um but we haven't well, got as to we that get point there in you the can story let us know. yet <laughs> um so yes i know exactly where in the manga i stopped and then i switched over to the anime and watched the rest of the anime. And then I read the rest of the, the, that episode's okay. worth of manga after nice. that. And yeah, uh, last week's episode, I don't know if you remember, like the first episode was basically one chapter of the manga. The second episode was like a chapter and a half. Um, the third episode was like three quarters, like a quarter and a half or something like that. Mm. Or one, in, I don't know, something like that. Um, anyway, last week's was about, I mean, the, the page lengths aren't exactly the same, so it doesn't really equate quite right. But I think last week's episode covered about seven chapters of the manga. Wow. And this week's episode covered about six. Wow. <laughs> jeez. So they're ramping it up a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, they are shorter chapters as well. Like the first chapter was 70 pages or something like oh, that. Okay. So it makes sense that that would be an episode. And these ones are all about 19, 20 pages, I think. So, okay. Eh, I guess maybe it balances out, but... Uh, yeah, it just feels like they 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 don't know how to um, incorporate all of the internal monologues of characters, and they do have like the the god who does the voiceover, the omniscient narrator thing. Yeah. Um, but they pretty much only do that at the beginning and the end of the episodes, and there's a lot more of it in the manga. Oh, okay. So anyway. Interesting. Sorry to disrupt. Oh, no, no. Uh, so the, the, the Oniguma, the dismembering of Oni, Oniguma is covered more in the manga. Uh, okay. I would, I would recommend it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of cu curious about it because um, I may start reading it as well. Yeah, but... I mean, she, so uh, Perona talks about her plan 
Yes. And it involves that taking taking pieces of Oniguma mm -hmm. to show to the elders to prove well she initially wants to take the whole of Oniguma mm. to show them but she realizes that that's not that's not possible. Yeah. So I think at some point she says, "Well, I'll just take his eyes and some of his fur oh, or okay. something like that." Oh, okay. So that's what she's More planning specific. to do. Yeah. Um and then so yeah, he, March objects. Yeah. So March catches on to what she's um about to do and yells and and Perona stops um, and then they have this like back and forth like basically you know trying to convince the other you know mm. um, of their case and uh, Perona ends up having to just give up uh, yeah. and concede to March um, which is interesting but then like I don't know I, I took a slight issue with this scene because they spend so long having this argument mm. um, I'm like you guys don't forget, you're trying to escape. Like <laughs> yeah. these people can't be that far away. Like uh, it's a little, it's a little, uh, um, um, a little disbelief uh, for me on that. Yeah. Well, so again, relating back to the manga, it's it's only about a page of the manga, but mm. um, the weight of the conversation, I guess, necessitated dragging it out a little bit more in the anime. Um, and perhaps because they're like they're glossing over or 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 fast forwarding some of this other stuff. But right, that, because, so a scene like that really stands out as like mm, lasting a longer than you know than yeah. the other stuff leading up to it, perhaps. But yeah, I mean that whole escape sequence is so fast compared to the manga. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Dang. um, so yes, and so they uh, they do escape. I'm trying to remember. What happens directly after that? After they escape, they're like, uh, yeah, we'll just have to barrel through the city or something like that. And uh, they are on their way through the city when um, the, the followers, the uh, bad girl and, uh, and her cronies yeah, her start masked, uh... chasing them and stuff. Oh, wait, there's... Yeah, there's that there's that weird little scene with uh Fushi and the uh the food wrapped up in a, a leaf. Um mm. which is a little bit longer in the manga as well. Uh, not that it's <laughs> that meaningful or anything like that, but uh <laughs> but it's very briefly shown and then um Perona switches places with uh old lady. Uh old lady oh, yes, takes over they, driving. Yeah. They have like a like a horse drawn cart or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, so yeah, then they're, they're being chased, they're being pursued. Um, there's a bunch of very convenient arrows, um, that never really hit anything. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, sort of a drawn out, uh, uh, chase sequence. Yeah. And then, um, and so yeah, Perona is like on the back of the, their horse drawn cart and is trying to defend. And then, an arrow comes uh, headed for her and, and March leaps forward and essentially takes the hit. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. In any other show, you'd be like, ah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. <laughs> or, or even in this show, you might think, ah, oh, she'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, As I did. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, for a moment, I was, I, I was... You know, I didn't think it was going to be what it was. Um, mm. But then, yeah, pretty quickly, it's like, oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, it does It does go pretty quick. Um, so one of the notes that I have here is, uh, I guess what you, you got what you wanted, George. You said it wasn't going to be, you know, you didn't want it to just follow these characters forever. You <laughs> wanted him to go from, you know, thing to thing yeah, to thing. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, are you happy with yourself? <laughs> are you happy that you killed March? <laughs> you monster. I mean, we're we're way into May at this point. I mean, March is a uh, foregone. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not happy. I liked March. Um, mm. I don't know. I was. I mean, it. It's uh, it was impactful, and it's a sh it's a type of show that it can it can actually go there, you know. Because like yeah, like I've been we've talked about, and I guess along those lines of what I've wanted the show to be a, a, as a whole is kind of you know Fu Chan. Uh, mm -hmm. drifting through you know uh, the world uh, just kind of learning different things and learning about the human condition and mm -hmm. um, seeing all sorts of atrocities but um, and and i believe that is what this 
is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is showing its uh its yeah. Yes. It is uh you know, don't get attached to anyone that's not immortal. Yeah. Because people that aren't immortal die. <laughs> I mean, we saw it we saw it before with the boy. Yep. Um but then it was interesting. We with, see it with March. I'm sure we'll see it again. With this one, I mean, it's cool that, I mean, cool. It's, it's a well-designed show in the sense that it can, it can do something like that. It can actually commit to killing a, a beloved character um, and not, like, retconning it somehow, you know? Yeah. Um, but then they did this whole thing. Well, yeah, they could do that in, uh, I don't know, how many chapters are out now? Like 140-something chapters, I think. So, oh, okay. You know, they could still retcon it. Who knows? They're not going to. Um, so then when she, she dies and then there's, you see sort of a, her spirit or something yeah, with, yeah. with Fuchan. And then that. Well, Perona, Perona jumps off, takes March's body, jumps off the wagon mm. and is just sort of wandering around the city, I guess. Not sure what she's planning to do, but she's carrying March's uh, dead body and, uh, Fuchan. Um, we didn't address the fact that Fuchan, uh, transforms into Oniguma. Um, after after March gets shot, he uh, he gets a little angry. Yeah, and he goes all Oniguma on them and starts you know just smashing up the city and stuff. Yeah, which uh, is something you were you know right right about you were predicted. I, that. I did I did predict that, and mm -hmm. and this is the point uh, where I stopped reading the manga and uh, and oh, okay. waited until I watched the episode. Okay, um, as soon as as soon as I saw that he was turning into Oni Oniguma, I was like, all right. Did you go um, back? And that was before. I, I didn't actually know March was dead still at that point. Okay. It was um, still up in the air of like what yeah, happened. Yeah. And I think in the anime, they leave it somewhat open-ended on yeah. whether that's the case or not. But like immediately after that, they sort of address it um, yeah. with Perona. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious, did you go back and read, well, I guess maybe you read up to this point anyway, but I'm just curious. Cause like to me in the anime, I thought the whole Oniguma transformation, like, I don't know. It just happened so quick. And I guess I get it in the heat of the moment, but it's like, dude, you could have done that. Like you're being attacked. <laughs> like, I don't know. It yeah, just felt like I the, mean, the it, frames were so quick that like, I mean, the God, the God has stated that for him to transform requires stimulus or something. Right. Mm, yeah. Um, and yeah, it just uh, required enough. Yeah. So that and, was it. Uh, and that was just, that was enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so yeah, he transforms into Oniguma uh, and basically, uh, you know, alleviates their issue of being, you know, yeah. attacked. <laughs> Immediately smashes everyone that's following them and starts just smashing up buildings and uh, mm. everything. And then, yeah, Perona, after she jumps off the cart and is walking with March's dead body, um, encounters uh, our bad girl leader um, mm. who has been sort of injured by Oniguma. Yes, yes. And his attack. And uh, and then, yeah, and then we see March's spirit sort of watching over this scene um, with Fuchan, or Fushi, nearby. Mm. And, uh, and, yeah, and then Perona, I don't know. It wasn't super obvious what she was going to do. There's, there's yeah. like a blade on the ground, and she picks it up, and we think that she's probably going to uh, kill uh, bad girl leader. Girl. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but then she sort of turns the blade on herself and she says something about, you know, I can't live with uh, what has happened, what I've done to March or something like that. I don't yeah, know exactly which is words. fair enough because I was imagining her, you know, going back, you know, without March, you know. So, like, in that moment, I could understand, like... And I guess actually even before that, Oniguma or Fu, Fu as Oniguma sort of comes over and uh, Perona says to him, uh, you're doing all of this for March because, you know, you wanted to protect her or whatever, but you don't need to do that anymore. Mm. And that's sort of the part where it's like, yeah, she's dead. Yeah. That's, that's why. That's yeah. her telling Fushi that she's dead. And, uh, and then he transforms into the boy. And then we see March's spirit, you know, standing yes, there yes. with him. Yeah, I, ju I jumped way far ahead there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's hard to sort of track it all. Um, mm. But yeah, and then we see March's spirit there, and then the whole thing with the blade, and uh, and then March is like, obviously very angry at Perona for wanting to kill herself, uh, essentially. Yeah. And she's like, Fushi, do something about it, do something mm -hmm. about it. And then he sort of grabs uh, Perona's hand 
and then he has that uh, look on his face and he he just looks like march looking yeah. at her disapprovingly right yeah which is sort of great yeah, um, I really enjoyed that. Because we know that like March is still with him because he's immortal. She's gone, but um just like the just like Joran's drive to get home carried it, the the stone, the whatever, the orb, uh to the nameless boy's house. Mm. Um he absorbs something every time, right? It absorbs yeah. something every time. Yeah. And so it absorbed that drive from that. And uh, it absorbed the boy's drive to get out of the, the place that it was in and ended up in uh, Nanana uh, village or whatever. And uh, yeah, so he's absorbing some of March. So March yeah. is dead, but not forgotten. And also sort of part of Fushi now because he just sort of absorbs yeah. all, Even of the, all of the like things around spirits, him. I guess. Yeah. Um that scene I liked it, but it reminded me of uh Ghost, the uh mm. <laughs> Patrick Swayze uh um What is it with you and pottery, man? <laughs> I know, right. Uh Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore, um, where like, you know, he he dies and then he like is able to in- inhabit Whoopi Goldberg's <laughs> mm. body or whatever. Um, he doesn't inhabit her body. He just, she can see him and he tells her things to say and then she says those things, right? Okay, but doesn't he like, kind of like... Does I he thought, possess her at some point? I thought I so. Know. Or maybe, like just maybe. to say things or like do something. I don't know. I thought so, but it's been yeah. a long time since I've yeah, seen that. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it too. Um, but it just reminded me of that. Especially like, yeah, with, with uh, like you said, Fuchan having her, her facial expression and yeah. and uh, Perona could not... But, uh, deny that again like it's it's already it's been established and set up that he absorbs that from the things around him and stuff right and it seems to be especially potent when something dies like you know Mm. joran the wolf dying and him becoming the wolf but then also absorb absorbing its determination and drive to get back to nameless true same thing with when nameless boy dies he absorbs that desire to go south you know so are you are you i mean that's interesting because like are you saying that um it wasn't actually like her act it wasn't her actual spirit that was guiding him it was just he had already absorbed by her dying he had already absorbed her um her will yes ish okay (laughs) because like because that's i mean that makes more sense to me that's just not Mm. how i took it because I was kind of, I was half expecting him to turn into her at mm. one point, especially later when they go to the, the actual uh, village. Yeah, I mean, well, he does later. Does he? Not at the, not at the, not at the village. Wait, is that? <laughs> He's spoiling things, you little <laughs> spoiler. No, no, they show it at the very end of the episode. Don't they? I don't think so. Because I was, Shit. I mean, unless I'm misremembering, because I was waiting for it, because I was like... They don't, they don't show, I'm pretty sure it's in the, I'm pretty sure it's in the very end of the episode. Mm -hmm. They don't show her completely. They show him as Joran walking along and he sees a pear on a tree. Oh, really? And then we see her hand grabbing Uh, the pear. Oh, really? Okay. I might have missed the very tail end of it. It was the very, very end. And if it's not in the very end of the episode... I'm sorry. It's manga spoilers. Is the wolf, the wolf's name is Jor- Joran? Like the show I dropped. Isn't it Joran? <laughs> Shit. Have I been saying the wrong name the whole time? Hold well, on. I don't remember the uh, wolf. Well, I guess it did have a name. It did have a name. Yeah, I never wrote it down. Joran. It could be. I just I just keep thinking of that show I dropped. <laughs> we both dropped. But but anyway, Joan, Joan. The, the wolf. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. If 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 it was in the anime, then hey, you guys saw it. Good for you. George didn't. He wasn't paying enough attention. He doesn't care. Um, if it's not in the anime, my bad. I read ahead in the manga, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was in the anime. You could be right. I'm I'm pretty sure. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it in the, because I watched the rest of the anime, and then I read the rest of the manga chapters. Well, tune in until next week where Tony will there. be berating me for being a fool or i will be apologizing for um not really spoiling much but (laughs) for giving manga spoilers in an unlike anime i mean unlike anime 
No, it's fair. It's not really a big spoiler. Yeah. Um, but I will give you crap about it. I also, I mean, I've managed to avoid telling you about any future story developments that I might have read about in my reading of synopses of uh, the next mm, several chapters. All right. Well, that uh, <laughs> that wraps us up for. So, uh... so I know what's coming. <laughs> I got a, I got a segue. He'll keep talking. I'm going to spoil everything. I'm going to go home tonight and I'm going to read all the rest of the chapters. Nice. I love this. I love this show. I love the manga even more. Um, did I, I think we probably talked about it initially in our, what we'll be watching, but this is, uh, the manga ka that did, uh, Koi no Katachi. It's like the only other thing she's done. Um, what is that? Uh, Silent voice is that what it's called? Oh, a silent voice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Movie. Uh, there's an anime too, I think. Right. Oh, is there? I don't know. It was serialized in a manga, wasn't it? Or manga? Wasn't there? I think there was an anime adaptation, which maybe was in mm. a movie. I think there was both. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, show's over. Go home. Oh, you already are home. All right. Well then, let me tell you about the joy of unlike anime social media. On social media, you can go to Umlike Anime. That's U M L I K E A N I M E. You can leave a message. We'll respond to it. We may even talk about it on the show. We've done that in the past. Even you know, last uh, last Friday's episode, I think we uh, we talked about someone that had left us a message on uh, on YouTube. I think it was. I don't know. It's been a couple days. I don't remember. And we appreciate all the uh, input we can get. Yes, yeah, especially positive input. Uh, if you tell us that we're doing a great job, we'll we'll like you. If you tell us we're doing a terrible job, please, you know, be explicit and tell us what we're doing wrong. Construct, um, right? Yeah, what we can do better. Um, you know, like one of our one of our first comments actually was someone saying that uh, my take on Vivi was hot trash, and uh, and you know it gave me pause to reevaluate. Um, what I had said about Vivi, and uh, I mean, more so what I hadn't said about Vivi, um, because there were good things about that show, um, but story wasn't one of them. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you guys know where to find us. I'm like anime. You go, leave us comments. We've got a Patreon. Give us money if you want. I don't care. I'm Tony. He's George. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.